All right, what's going on today? I'm gonna to show you how to build this scrolling, stretchy logo and image section, and it's gonna repeat infinitely, just like that we can keep scrolling. So this is inspired by bureaudam.com. They have pretty much the same thing, except rather than just an image like I'm showing, they've got their whole little portfolio here, so you can click next and previous and check them out. Anyways, we're gonna be using Lenis Scroll Smoother with the infinite flag on today, as well as GSAP Scroll Trigger. So let's hop into Webflow and then I'll show you the code. Hey there, Webbay. All right, the structure in Webflow is not too complicated. You can see within body here, we have content wrap. This is set to flex vertical. And then within that, I have three content items. So let's zoom out and I'll show you the styles for content wrap here. If I click over to the style pane, now you can see we've got it flex vertical centering and I got five viewport heights for the uh, row gap there. And then if we go to content item, these are the things that we're actually gonna be applying the transformations to, the scaling in the Y direction, or the scaling in both directions. When I say direction, I really mean axes. The logo SVG is just gonna scroll in the Y axis, but the image is gonna scroll both in the X and Y axis. And now you can see I've got a height of 100 dynamic viewport heights to that. 100 viewport heights would be fine as well. I'm just using that because Webflow recently added it. And then if I click in, you can see my SVG here has got a width and height of 100% on the embed. And it's a width and a height of 100% on the actual SVG code as well. So you can see that width and height set to 100% here. We've still got the view box. Uh, this is the original aspect ratio, but I'm saying preserve aspect ratio equals none because I want this thing to just sweat, stretch, stretch, stretch to the entire width and the entire height. And that's all I did for the SVG code when I was importing it. The next content item div is what has our image. This image is set to cover with a width and a height of 100%. And so that way it basically fills up also the entire width and height of its container, which is a set to 100 viewport heights and the width of the whole screen. And then the last content item is actually just a complete duplicate of our first one. So the principle that we're gonna be using here is very similar to a scrolling marquee. As soon as we scroll to this position right here, where we're taking up the entire screen, it's gonna snap back to this one up here. And Lenis is gonna take care of that for us with the infinite property. Each content item within our project has a custom attribute of wb-animation equals content item. That's what we're gonna use in our code to target these elements. And then we'll have a look at what code we're bringing in here on the page settings. So if I zoom in, inside the head tag, you can see the very first script we're loading is Lenis library. These all have the defer attribute, by the way. After that, we're loading GSAP. After that, we're loading GSAP scroll trigger plugin. After that, we are loading the code that's hosted on Visual Studio Code right now. When I load this up to YouTube, I will move the code into the closing body section. Uh, so you can just copy paste directly from the Webflow Conable if you'd like. The code will also be available on my website via my GitHub. And then this style tag we have on um, the Lenis combo class on HTML, we set height to auto. This is required for Webflow. I just grabbed this from the Lenis documentation. And then this is just some code to hide the scroll bars because if we had the scroll bar visible, you would see the scroll bar go to the bottom and then jump to the top, go to the bottom and then jump to the top. And that might be kind of a weird experience for our user. That's everything there is for the Webflow project. If we publish, we can see that we just have a static page and it's scrolling. We have our logo and then the image and then back to our logo. So let's get started working with the code on this one. All right, so in the code here, we're actually listening for the DOM content loaded event here at the bottom of the code. And when that fires, we're gonna run our init function. Our init function is up here and controls all of our other functions that are gonna be run. The very first thing we wanna do is register the scroll trigger plugin with this statement right here. And then we're gonna use run Lenis to run our code to make Lenis scroll smoother work. And then we're gonna call run animation where we're gonna write our code for the GSAP animation. Now let's get Lenis running first. If I just take this boilerplate code straight from their documentation, I'll have a smooth scroller setup just by saving and then coming back to our website and refreshing. And you can see now we've got smooth scroll rather than the default browser scroll. Now there's one little flag property I can add as a Lenis property by adding infinite equal to true. So this is the property infinite. You can see I put these curly brackets inside of the parentheses for the Lenis object and set the value to that to true. And now if I save and I come back to our page and I refresh, I can scroll. And as soon as I get to the bottom, it's just gonna keep going. So I'm just scrolling down right now and we've already got an infinite scroller set up with Linus. So that was pretty easy. Next, let's focus on the GSAP animation. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is select all the elements with the attribute that we defined in Webflow. And so we're gonna use the document.querySelectorAll method for that and store it in a variable called content items. The attribute we're looking for is that wb-animation equals content item with the syntax of the square brackets around it. 
Next, we'll extract each item into its own variable so that we can reference it throughout our code. So we have bay logo equals content items of zero. We have our middle image equals content items of one. And we have our bay logo duplicate equals content items of two. Next, we'll go ahead and animate our first logo. And the strategy we're gonna use here is we're gonna set our transform origin such that it is stretching from the place that we want it to do. In this case, from the center bottom. So we'll call gsap.set. We'll pass it the reference to bay logo. And then within our object here, our properties object, our tween variables, we'll set transform origin to 50%, 100%. What this is saying is 50%, meaning the middle of the image or the middle of, in this case, the image wrapper, because we're using that content item attribute, right? And then 100% means the bottom of that div. So it's gonna be the center middle of our div. And then we also wanna get the scale Y to one, which is just the normal size. Now we're gonna tween it to that a scale Y value of zero. And so we get a reference to bay logo, and then our tween variables are what's gonna go right in here. And the first one we wanna set is that variable scale Y to zero. There's gonna be some other properties that we wanna to set too, like the easing to none, and a scroll trigger value so that this thing is tied to the user scroll. Scroll trigger takes its own object as a value, and within that we'll pass some properties. The trigger is gonna be bay logo itself. It's gonna start when the logo is in the center of the viewport. So when the center of the logo is in the center of the viewport is what that means. And then it's gonna end when the bottom of the div holding the logo is at the top of the viewport. Next, we'll set scrub to true, and this is what links scroll trigger to the user scroll, or the playhead of the tween to the user scroll. And now for the property on leave, we'll define a function, and we just wanna set the scale of this back to one once this animation is done. So we say gsap.set bay logo scale y one. And if I save, and we look at our project now, and we'll refresh, now we can see this thing is scaling and the image is coming right in but we still have our image not doing anything and the, um, the second logo doesn't do anything, but you can see right here is where Lennis takes over and snaps it back to the start. Let's go ahead and get working on the middle image. So to do that, we're gonna use a GSAP timeline for this and the timeline can also take some variables and we're gonna put our scroll trigger variable right in here. So again, that takes another value. Uh, trig trigger is the property and we wanna set the trigger to middle image. We'll start this scroll trigger animation when the top of that image wrapper is at the bottom of the viewport. And we'll set a separate end trigger in this case. Normally when I'm doing GSAP timelines, I use the trigger um, as both the start and the end trigger, but the uh, scroll trigger is really flexible and that you can set the end trigger to something else. Anyways, we're gonna set it to the Bay logo duplicate, which is the wrapper for the logo underneath the image. And so we wanna set the end when the top of that is at the top of the viewport. And then we'll set scrub to true, again, linking it to the playhead to the scroll, and we'll set ease to none. And now we're gonna define our timeline, so we call middle image timeline. First, we're gonna set the transform origin to the top. Again, this is the x, the x coordinate, and this would be the y coordinate if you're thinking like a Cartesian plane. And we're gonna set the scale to zero, so the image is gonna start with a scale of zero, um, and the transform origin from the top of that thing. Then we're gonna call dot two. So GSAP is gonna animate middle image to a scale of one. Then we're gonna call dot set. So this is really like, think of this as the middle of our animation or um, based on how we define the triggers here. This is right when the image is at its full width and full height. But we'll reset the transform origin such that the Y position is now at the bottom of that wrapper div. And we'll call dot two on it again and set the scale back to zero. And now if I save and we check out our progress, I can come back and refresh. And so we've got our image animating in and our top logo animating out. And then now our image is animating out and our logo is coming in, but that duplicate logo is not yet animating. So that's the last thing that we need to set here. So to animate the duplicate logo, it's gonna be very similar to what we did for the first logo. We're gonna call gsap.set, set the transform origin to the top in this case. And then we'll use a from to animation and we'll get a reference to our bay logo duplicate. We'll set the scale Y from zero. So this is a from two animation. I think in the first one I used just a two animation, just showing you another way you could do it. Anyways, we'll come from a scale Y of zero and we'll go to a scale Y of one. Now we still need to set our scroll trigger variables. So we'll go ahead and start doing that. We'll set ease to none. And then we have scroll trigger here. We've got the options value and that gets its own properties. The trigger is gonna be bay logo duplicate in this case. It's gonna start when the top of bay logo duplicate is at the bottom of the viewport. It's gonna end when the bottom of it's at the top of the viewport. And we're gonna set scrub to true, so it's tied to user scrub. And we'll define an on leave back function to be called once that thing, once the animation is done, and we will set the scale to Y, very similar to what we did in the first case. So now if I save and I refresh, 
we can see the top logo is animating, the bottom, the middle image is stretching into view, and now it's collapsing out. And then we have our duplicate logo stretching up. And right at the end here, that's when it retakes over. So now we're back in sequence carousels. We're spinning around and around, and this will just go on forever. So something to note about this is that you may find some issues when you are resizing the window here. Um, you also will find, or I found at least, that the Lenis infinite property did not work on mobile. So for mobile right here in Webflow, all I did was I just hid this content item. You can see here, this has a combo class of hide tablet where it's hidden. And then content wrap this flex container. I just set the height to 100 dynamic viewport heights and let these uh, kind of fill themselves. So that's it. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. If you like these uh, creative coding tutorials, these are a lot of fun to do. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.